Let's talk about magnetism. Now, we don't talk about magnetic force in the way that we talk about electric force. There's not a nice little formula for it. We generally talk in terms of magnetic field. The symbol for it is a B. It is a vector. And why B? I suspect it comes from whoever was doing this first used A for the first one, B for the next one, C for the next one in terms of variables. Anyway, it's stuck. There are some that will give this a slightly different name, magnetic flux density, and use H for the magnetic field. This and H have different meanings. They are very much related to each other, but almost every textbook until you get into graduate level will use B. And a main thing about magnetism is that I have a North Pole and a South Pole. The magnetic field external to the magnet flows out of North and in the South. And then you draw those until you get tired of drawing. Internal to the magnet, it's flowing south to north. It is a continuous line there. So if I take any surface right here, whatever magnetic field I have flowing in, I have magnetic field flowing out. No matter what surface, unlike the sort of the electricity side of E and M, you have you can have a positive charge here with electric field flowing away from it or you can have a negative charge with electric field flowing towards it. Magnetic field, it's a continuous loop. Now the question is, can you have just a North Pole or just a South Pole? It is not unallowed as best as I can tell. I did not pursue this kind of physics. So this is what I pick up on the streets. If you had one that would be known as a magnetic monopole, there is a basis for it existing within quantum physics. Although it's sort of strange, my understanding of it is that if you had a North Pole, there is a South Pole that exists somewhere, and then there's this link between the two. So it would appear to us as if there's only a North Pole, but according to quantum theory, there should also be a South Pole somewhere. Now, so far, it has not been found, the, but theorists, they are a read that will go, well, it's possible, so let's go ahead and make that assumption that it exists, and let's do a whole bunch of stuff with it. So there's a whole bunch of math that ready to just fall into place as soon as we actually find one. Now, I do not know if the story is true or not, but I like the story. Was that supposedly there's some graduate students decided to play a practical joke on one of, on their professor, and they faked data so that it looked like there was a magnetic monopole. Now, when I was a graduate student, it was incredibly funny. It's not as funny now as it was then. Now, they did reveal it that it was a joke before it got published, so it was only the momentary embarrassment. Again, don't know if it's true or not, but I still spread the rumor. In terms of units, the SI unit for magnetic field is the Tesla, named after Nikolai Tesla, is the Tesla. You will also see Gauss and the CGS system, which is also metric. There is the Gauss, named after Gauss, which brings up the urbane and sophisticated joke of what father-son pair were the greatest mathematicians. It'd be Gauss and his father. What did his father do? It doesn't matter. Similar to what brothers hit the most number of home runs in the major leagues, Hank and Tommy Aaron. Hank obviously had, I think, 741. Tommy, 35. So Gauss was so great. If he had had a son, there would have been a tie between him and his father and him and his son. The, the advantage of Gauss, well, one, if you get far enough in graduate school, or if you start getting graduate school, they tend to deal in Gauss and not Tesla. Tesla's an SI thing, and the... Uh, the people who deal with magnetism, for the most part, go, you know, whatever. That's fine for the, the savages, but we will deal with Gauss. The advantage of Gauss is that the magnetic field of the Earth is on the order of a Gauss. About a half a Gauss. But this is comes from sort of nature. And this comes from other... As we started defining other things, Tesla popped out of it. Now, there's a relationship between the two that tend to the... 
negative fourth Tesla is equal to one Gauss. One Gauss. Uh, according to Wikipedia, it's also GS. I can't remember the symbol I was using in graduate school. We deal with so few numbers in graduate school, it's mostly letters. We also know that north two North Poles will repel, and a North and a South Pole will attract, and two South Poles will repel. Sounds very similar to the rule with charges that opposites attract like repels. Please refrain from trying to get into this is the positive side and the negative side. That is, uh, I've seen that before. It, I feel like it comes from some middle school thing. If you start dealing with the theoretical, start to, I never dealt with the positive and negative sides of this. The only times I have seen something like that comes from if a monopole exists. And since, again, no one's seen the monopole yet, despite many people trying to find it, refrain from the positive and negative there. It's north and south. They needed some label to it, and that's what they came up with. Please note that a compass, if I have a compass here, the north end of the compass, it points north because this actually is the north. It is a magnet. This is the north end of the magnet, and the south end is over here, which means that if the north end of this magnet is attracted to something, it has to be attracted to the south end. So if I have the earth right here, earth, this is the, what I'm called, the north pole, and this is the south pole, equator, we are here. The North Pole, what we call the North Pole is only because it is where the north side of this, this magnet in a compass will point, which means that mag from a physics point of view, this is actually a South Pole and that is a North Pole right here. So the North Pole of this magnet is attracted to the South Pole of the Earth. So the North Pole is really a South Pole and the South Pole is really a North Pole. Isn't physics fun? One other bit here is that just like there's an electric flux, there's a magnetic flux. Now the symbol for magnetic flux, the flux is the capital phi. Uh, I will put an M down there and sometimes I'll put a B down there. I will flip back and forth sometimes from one equation to the next. Both of these are magnetic flux and the magnetic flux is for calculus based is the integral of B dot DA. Or if magnetic field is constant, B dot A, so 152, you'll be dealing with this. 252, you'll be dealing with both of these. And because whatever flows in flows out, if I have a closed surface, so I have the magnetic flux through a closed surface will be zero. And in terms of units, since this is Tesla and that's meter squared, this becomes Tesla meter squared. However, that's usually too much for physicists to write, and so that would be zero Webers, and that is the Weber. To give you some sense of scale, I talked about the Earth's magnet. magnetic field is on the order of a Gauss, which is on the order of a one ten thousandth of a Tesla. Superconducting magnets, if you get to the million, multi-million dollar experiments, the, those magnets are about 30 Tesla. Typical magnet that is used in a lab for the people who aren't dealing with the, the huge giant magnets, that's about two, two and a half Tesla. Uh, that's more than what we deal with. What creates a magnetic field? Well, a magnetic field is created by moving charge. If I have an electron here and I shoot it off to the right, I'm going to create a magnetic field. What, where's the magnetic field that's created? There's a right hand rule. You put your thumb in the direction of the current flow. Now, if I have a negative charge flowing that way, that means I have a current flowing in the opposite direction. So I have a current flowing that way. The magnetic field goes along with the curled fingers. So current flowing to the left, the magnetic field is going into the page above 
and then out of the page below. So I would write that, that my magnetic field is into the page here. It gets weaker the farther out you get. And out of the page here. And again, also a reminder of the notation that the X represents into the page and the dot represents out of the page. Same can be true if I have a wire here. If I have a current flowing to the right, then my magnetic field is coming out of the page on this side, into the page on that side. And I'll be doing dots and X's a lot in this section of the course.